Mm. Well, I think we are live. We were just waiting a few more minutes just to see I can, the number of people joining is still. So we were just waiting, but maybe for a few seconds, we can just run some introductions for the four of us. So nowadays we were difficult, to, diff, this, not, not common to see two people together. So Paul, should we go? So I'm Gabby, the head of sustainability here at Experiences Everything. And I'm Paul, I'm strategy director and founder of Experiences Everything. So Orlando, our guest, do you want to? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Orlando. I'm Chief Innovation Officer at System One um, and uh, have uh, do a lot of work with, well, advertising and, and packaging. Cool. Zhao? Yeah. Hi, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Zhao. I'm the Head of Data Insights and Experience with Everything. Great. So I think we will move on and I will pass on to you, Paul. <coughs> Explain what do we mean by how connected packaging will accelerate sustainability? That's okay. Let me just give me one second. No. So there's just a few things that we're going to cover. Um, uh, hopefully they're, in, they're, they're of a little bit of interest. Obviously, uh, sustainability is, uh, is on all of our minds for all sorts of reasons. Um, we have a large sustainability practice um, with a number of clients, but we specialize within connected packaging. And um, firstly is where we, we think connected packaging can make uh, sustainability more active because of information. Secondly, benefit from new forms of creativity that can, connected packaging makes available. And thirdly, um, users, the connected packaging has the opportunity to drive brand communities to create tangible reward, reward for consumers, but actual sustainable behavior. So we think all of those things are interesting territories and support uh, for the large subject matter of sustainability. So I'll pass on to Gabby. Thank you. So I will be touching on the, how information can accelerate actually sustainable actions. So what we've seen in several surveys, the last one from McKinsey in December last year, that consumers, especially on uh, developing countries, such uh, as you can see here, China, Brazil, Indonesia, Indonesia, and India, are willing to spend more in sustainable packaging and products. But the issue we are seeing is people are not getting the information they would like to help them in taking the decision and purchasing the right product for them. So as you all know, this is not, this is not helping, right? Too much information sometimes, it doesn't give us enough information for us to make our decisions as consumers. And of course, the legislation around that is great that we can see these icons appearing on the labels, but we as consumers, we don't understand them most of the time. And when we see them with loads of more information on pack, it's still not helpful. So we are really trying to understand as consumers, is this really sustainable? Is this uh, have the, the right credentials in terms of being uh, vegan or being bio or being uh, even sharing the information for the carbon footprint that product has? So just too, too many and we are lost in the middle of this. So what would be to be transparent, right? So you can see you the US using a smart label to share ingredients, ingredients, information with consumers. But that is kind of, as we have here, if you ask me a question and I give you a manual full of terms that you don't recognize, that's not really being transparent. That's not being really being helpful as a brand, right? So we can do better than that. So that's when connected packaging is the answer for that. So we have plenty of examples and the other, the other points we're covering here, you will see different ways in doing that. But here is an example from SIF. They have now this, this refill. So instead of consumers buying the, the, the bottle, they just buy the refill and by scanning that, you understand how to use the product. 
and also trying to understand how much you're saving in plastic in buying the refill instead of the bottle of every time. And also this example here in Brazil that they have this bought this um, this is a milk example and by scanning the the code you see this character coming to life on your screen giving uh, bringing and engaging with you telling we do nice things with the, the material that we recycle and also they will help the consumer to type the address there and find the nearest place to you to recycle that product and not only that also sharing information about what that product is made of because uh, people would think this is paper but they have a different technology so they is made of plastic paper and aluminium so we as a consumer again looking for the information what how should i recycle this how should i what should i do with this to be make sure i i'm taking care of my carbon footprint so this is a way of explaining and really engaging with the consumer in a different level which is the good is a segue to Orlando where we'll be sharing with you how creatively we can approach this because transparency is the combination of all these points together. It's not only about the ingredients or not only about the supply chain or not only about the legal compliance, it's how those all these four elements together in a creative way using the technologies we have out there to give this to the consumers. So I will pass on to you. Alana. Thank you very much, Gabby. So how can we use connected packaging to encourage sustainability, sustainable behavior in the household and beyond? And I'm going to look at this through the lens of creative itself. And I'm going to start with perhaps brand characters. Perhaps brand characters can help us. Brand characters are, after all, extremely good at sustaining people's attention, holding people's attention. They're also extremely good at eliciting an emotional response, which helps to encode the brand in long term memory. In fact, brand characters are very good at establishing three mental shortcuts that we all use uh, when deciding which brands to choose. Next slide, Gabby. So the next the, the three mental shortcuts are fame because if a brand comes easily to mind, it is to our system one and fast and frugal thinking minds a good choice. But also these characters establish and elicit feeling in people, a positive feeling. And if I feel good about a brand, then it is a good choice to us. And finally, they also establish a third F, fluency, processing fluency, because if I can recognize a brand easily and quickly, it is to our fast and frugal minds a good choice. And investment in feeling assets that create feeling and fluency generates fame. And it also generates market share gain and profit gain, too. So recurring characters in advertising and in human human scenarios in advertising across the course of a campaign, what I call fluent devices, encourage and lead to much greater market share gain and profit gain than campaigns that don't have these characters. But they're not just important in advertising, they're important in packaging too. So Jenny Romaniuk of the Ehrenberg Bass Institute has shown that, ca that, that characters on packaging are more effective than logos, shapes, fonts, colors, uh, even innovative closure mechanisms at driving salience and uh, uniqueness. So in advertising and packaging, they're extremely helpful, and yet they're not used very much by brands on packaging, and they're also disappearing from advertising, as I've shown uh, through historical analyses of advertising over the years, leading us to pose the question, what has happened to the cookie crook? Advertising characters and brand characters have been used as well, not just for generating brand share, but have been used a great deal in public service announcements too. Take, for example, Woodsy the Owl, who had an anti-pollution, anti-graffiti, anti-litter message, give a hoot, don't pollute, or Smokey Bear, who encouraged responsible behavior around fires and matches in woodland areas, or McGruff the Crime Dog, take a bite out of crime, encouraging people to be vigilant as they went about their daily lives, 
or Superman perhaps with his anti-nicotine messaging, encouraging children never to say yes to a cigarette. What if brands could use their characters? What if brands could perhaps revisit characters of old or create new characters to encourage sustainable behavior? Well, here are just three illustrations of how that might work. Cookie Cop always anticipated Cookie Crook's crime, which was finding new and ingenious ways of stealing the kids' Cookie Crisp cereal. If you love cookies, you'll love Cookie Crisp, the saying went. Well, what are they up to now? Perhaps Cookie Crook buys his own cereal today, but he's still misbehaving. His crime is not recycling empty milk cartons. Not if Cookie Cop has anything to do with it. Mend your ways, we recycle these days, he could say. Then there's Trix Rabbit. Trix has always tricked children into giving him their Trix cereal, but he'd always get found out. Silly rabbit. But now the joke's on Trix. Imagine a pack where kids trick the rabbit into doing good time and time again, all for the promise of a bowl of tricks. Clever kids. And then there's Toucan Sam. Toucan Sam, as we all know, uses his wonderful sense of smell to sniff out those elusive fruit loops from great distances, leading other animals to them. Follow your nose. It always knows, he says. Now his impeccable sense of smell might lead kids to the right trash can his magic long beak sorting the trash into the right compartments. Use your head, recycle instead, he might say. Does this sound outlandish? Well, actually, no, there are brands doing this today. Kellogg's, for instance, with their Mission Tiger initiative, are using Tony the Tiger and Frosted Flakes uh, to encourage, to support school school. Schools are having to cut sports, and I'm not okay with that. I'm on a mission to help fix it, and I could use your help. When you buy a box and upload your receipt, you can trigger a donation to help these kids. So far, we've helped hundreds of thousands of kids play like tigers. Tap here to learn more about my mission. There are also fun interactive filters and a game. So perhaps there's a future for characters after all. They build your brand. And they can encourage us all to do good, too. As Tony might say, they're great. Paul, over to you. Thank you, Orlando. So the um, so that's a discussion of the degree to which creativity can support uh, uh, sustainability from connected packaging. The next thing is to consider whether the stock in trade of, of promotions and targeting consumers by promotions and targeting specific consumer goods by promotions can help as well. So it's a common place to observe that um, uh, sustainability has, has a cohort effect amongst young consumers, and they are particularly prone um, to uh, be engaged. So clearly we have some cohorts that are interested um, uh, in, in consumers and positioning sustainability as a badge of commitment. So if you look at brands, for example, uh, like uh, Beyond Meat um, is a business that, uh, it, with its ethical stance in respect of um, uh, the uh, reduction of uh, uh, carbon footprints as a result of plant-based initiatives, um, gathers communities to uh, 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 repurchase and to stay loyal to their products uh, in order to reduce energy consumption and, um, uh, 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 and community impact. So Beyond Meat has created a community. Even more powerfully, perhaps, the Unilever own seventh generation uses the power of community, um, not simply to, to activate in narrow issues uh, or single issues um, like um, carbon footprint, but actually to operate in support of, of a, as a B Corp, as a whole, uh, uh, in support of many, many action groups to whom they fund, uh, they provide advertising funding for posts so they use their community to generate funds for, for, for multiple issues um, and even have a thing called Generation Good, which is a closed Facebook group where they're starting to build a really tight sense of community building values of a seventh generation. So we thought that's a very good, good, good idea. But the idea of, of, of not just speaking to the converted, um, but speaking to the unconverted seems a real opportunity for connected packaging because connected packaging already 
um, has a very large community in and of itself for people who pursue promotions. The largest use of connected packaging currency is via promotions. Um, so if you take a brand like Pepsi, they encourage connected packaging usage across promotions globally with it with, for their key uh, uh, sponsorship partnerships, whether they be football, American football, or music with Cardi B. Um, so they have already built communities. And we asked the question, wouldn't these connected communities, couldn't they, as a community, actually, even though currently unconverted, make some impact on sustainability? So our view would be, why wouldn't we, as well as using, as, as, as Orlando says, using creative characters to support sustainability, why couldn't we use sponsorship promotions to support sustainability? So what greater impact could we have than uh, as, as Pepsi in the middle of the Super Bowl promoted uh, their partnership with The Weeknd this time in the largest single advertising spot on planet Earth, they could have actually used that week at that spot to engage recycling activity to, to scan the pack and win an evening with the weekend. So we believe that both with creativity and with sponsorship, we don't we think that the devil shouldn't always have the best tunes, that the angels of sustainability should be able to use the power of marketing by connected packaging to impact on sustainability. So Zhao, I'll pass, over, I'll pass on to Zhao to look about not only how does that, can that be creatively or, 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 or sponsorship impactful, how can we actually create real tangible reward um, uh, in, in the connected ecosystem for packaging? Thank you, Paul. Yeah, so um, in this final section, I will be uh, explore a little bit how connected pack can accelerate sustainable value and the rewards. Um, Gabby, if you can go to the next one. So, um, I mean, re uh, recently, uh, as we know, the consumer's attitudes towards sustainability has increased a lot. Um, from this IBM study, um, the survey tells us 77% consumers say uh, it's important for the brands to be sustainable. However, there is a challenge in, in regards to their behavior. So the gap tells us um, the fit, only 57% of them says they are willing to actually um, you know, take some actions to change their purchasing behavior. Then when exam uh, what's the barriers to change, so the answers are typically either uh, I'm not interested or it's too expensive or I don't believe it, it will make a, a difference or um, it's too um, inconvenient. Um, Gabby, if you can, next one. Um, yeah, then, yeah, then basically um, in, in the following uh, sort of a, a few slides, we find a few um, examples of how brands are currently tackling uh, those barriers. So, for example, um, Unilever has launched the refill station trials um, it, um, last year in the UK. It basically, uh, they put three different refill models in the store. And the first one is a touch-free um, refill machines, which consumer can yeah, can go to get uh, go there to um, refill by themselves. And they also offer an um, in-home refill experience. Um, and uh, there there are sort of self-serve containers, and shoppers can um, either can buy or, or or bring their own. And then next one. And then then there are some sort of simple and uh, pretty. Um, uh, established models you know, in the countries like US and some European countries already. And they, they already embrace the reverse vending machines, which is very simple. Um, so consumers just recycle bottles and cans and in exchange for money. So in this way, uh, we are sort of trying to encourage them to change the behavior by uh, increasing the value. Uh, next one. Yeah. Um, then, then in China, uh, Alibaba's uh, Alipay app, which is a digital wallet service, they launched a program called Ant Forest, and uh, it basically reviews user some uh, green energy points when they take take some sort of uh, uh, efforts by, for example, uh, by biking to work, going paper le uh, paperless, and buying sustainable products. And uh, they they sort of um, turn this into a bit of game which they can uh, play uh, within their phone. Uh, so so they're sort of grow a virtual tree. And then Alipay uh, works with NGOs to actually plant a real tree, um, then, and then uh, and they can sort of uh, view uh, view their trees in real time. For example, uh, so this is kind of uh, helps to uh, increase the engagement and to bring those ten tangible impacts to the consumers directly. 
And then the final example uh, we've got here is the, um, so again, uh, Unilever um, in, in uh, working with Alibaba, which they launched the country's first large scale closed loop plastic recycling system in China. And uh, each machine has uh, this AI tag, which can automatically identify different kinds of plastic bottle. But more interestingly, is that beyond that, um, the sustainability, the benefits for, for the brands, they can uh, interact with consumers across the platforms, including uh, when they purchase and when they use it and when, uh, up to the, when they re recycle it. So throughout that, they, they are, you know, users are rewarded with green energy points or e-vouchers, so which they can sort of do the repurchase. And then, yeah, that's the final one. I will pass back to um, Paul to do a bit of final um, summary. So, so packaging has often been seen centrally as one of the villains of the piece of sustainability, but we see it as one of the potential heroes um, in terms of engaging consumers, um, both by instructing superior use and reuse, engaging with entertainment, offering opportunities to recycle and participate with brands, get real re rewards tangibly in your hand at the point of engagement, and then to stimulate repurchase of more sustainable products. So packaging is no longer the villain. Packaging is potentially the hero if it's connected. So thank you very much. So I just want to check if we had some questions. So, uh, Yes, so we have a question from Lana. Do you think there is a trend in consumer icon shopping, buying products where they can see that the packaging has the cruelty free bunny and so on? I think um, the observation that we have is that in many categories, um, cosmetics particularly, consumers are actively searching for uh, cruelty free. So PETA is a big initiative um, with a number of companies, Unilever being one of them. So you're yeah, absolutely right. Uh, there is now active search in a number of categories, not in all, uh, but in terms of uh, home care products and personal care products, um, the, the search is uh, pretty active now. Yeah. Thank you. Great. So thank you so much, everyone who joined. And yes, so you have your contacts. If you need anything, just please ping us a note. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.